Elon Musk's Neuralink is a brain implant that can turn human beings into cyborgs, reverse physical disabilities, cure diseases, and save the planet from evil AI superintelligence. But how does it work? While a lot of science involved is literally brain surgery, I promise you that it isn't as difficult to understand as you might think. We are about to show you the inner workings of the brain-computer interface device known as Neuralink. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is create a physical interface between your brain and the computer. That means we need to access your brain, and that means we cut a nice round hole into your skull. Not too big, just about the size of a watch face, that's all. Now, this is the outer layer of your brain, the cerebral cortex. This is where all of your high-level calculations take place. Different segments of the cortex control different aspects of your mind and body. Towards the front is where your mood and emotions are processed. Towards the back is where all of your sensory inputs get received, like touch and vision. Right in the middle is the motor cortex. This is the sweet spot that Neuralink wants to access, and it's because... This particular section of the brain matter is responsible for turning thought into action. The idea here is that we can hardwire the motor cortex directly into a computer. Now, you are controlling that computer entirely with your mind instead of a mouse and a keyboard. For a person who physically cannot move their hands, this is a life-changing enhancement. But even for an able-bodied person, you would unlock a million times more bandwidth in the connection between your mind and the machine, your thoughts instantly transformed into digital action. In order to access those thoughts though, we need to insert a wire into your brain, and this is not just any wire. Neuralink engineers have developed an ultra-flexible metal thread that is thinner than a human hair, yet is also able to carry 16 separate electrode connections into the brain tissue. Each Neuralink N1 device has 64 threads that need to be inserted into the cortex, and the level of precision required is so high that no human surgeon could perform the operation, so instead, Neuralink uses a robot. The function of the R1 robot is remarkably similar to a sewing machine. The robotic arm has a tiny needle on the end that will very quickly stab into the brain material, deposit the thread, and then retract. The R1 has an advanced targeting system that helps it to avoid hitting any veins or blood vessels within the brain. The needle and the thread is only piercing the surface level of gray matter. What we're targeting with those threads are very specific cells inside the brain matter called neurons. There are 86 billion neurons distributed throughout the entire mass of your brain, and 16 million of them are located in the outer cortex layer, and that makes them accessible to a Neuralink electrode. In the most basic sense, neurons are like little switches inside your brain, and they allow these electrochemical signals to travel all the way down from the cortex, through the intersections of the brain, and into the brain stem, where those signals get dispatched out through the nervous system to all the different parts of the body. So every action of the human body, from blinking your eyes to kicking a ball, begins with a particular sequence of neuron activations. By sticking our electrode thread right into the brain material where these neurons live, we can start to read the signals being broadcast by the neurons, kind of like eavesdropping on the brain's internal communications. Right now, we are only looking at them in a binary sense. The neuron is either active or not active, one or zero. And in this way, we can start viewing brain activity the same as computer code. In the instant that you perform an action, like clenching your fist, a group of neurons will switch from inactive to active, from zero to one. And as long as that pattern is repeated every time that you perform that action, then we can essentially decode the neural signal for clenching a fist. So that's great, but what do we do with it? Well, imagine you have a spinal cord injury just below your brainstem. Your neurons can still generate the signal for clenching a fist, but the physical connection to the arm has been broken, so the message isn't getting delivered. But if we can use the threads to read that signal directly from the cortex, then we can create an electronic bridge that bypasses the physical damage and delivers the message into the nervous system. Or 
In an even more extreme example, you could send that neural signal out of the body and into something else, like a robotic arm, that would respond to brain activity in exactly the same way as your biological arm. This is all stuff that Elon Musk is talking about right now. This is what he expects the technology to accomplish within the next decade. But that still doesn't explain how this is going to happen. Want to know the secret to becoming a successful YouTuber? I'm going to tell you right now. It's one very important ingredient. Caffeine. YouTube is a job that never ends, and that means I need an endless supply of coffee at home and around the office, which is why I love Trade Coffee. Trade is a coffee subscription service that helps you make better coffee at home by delivering freshly roasted beans to your door. They do all the hard work for you. Trade has built relationships with over 55 local roasters to bring you the best craft coffee that America has to offer in the comfort of your own home, and you know your beans are going to be fresh because Trade Coffee is roasted to order and shipped within 48 hours of roasting. And you don't even need to be a coffee expert to love your Trade Coffee. Trade maps your specific preferences to hundreds of different coffee flavor profiles. Personally, I've been loving this Space Cadet blend from Atomic Roasters. Not only is the name super fitting, but I really love the sweet and complex flavor profile of Clementine, Nougat, and Burnt Sugar. Trade pairs you with the best coffees using a combination of art and science, marrying industry expertise and machine learning. So click the link in our description and visit trade.com slash teslaspace to sign up and save $15 on select plans and get your first bag of coffee free. If we've got the physical side of Neuralink down with the neurons and the threads, then the rest is actually pretty easy. Let's talk about where those wires lead. The N1 brain implant. This electronic device is only about the size of a quarter and the thickness of a wristwatch. Elon Musk often calls it a Fitbit in your skull, and he's pretty much bang on with that description. The electronics are encased in a soft, non-reactive silicone jacket, and the implant will sit on top of your brain, inside the hole that was cut into the skull. It's thin enough that the skin can be folded back over the hole, and the device will be totally covered. No visible sign that you have a brain implant. Inside the N1 case is a small lithium-ion battery cell, a wireless charging coil, a Bluetooth radio transmitter, and a silicon microchip with a very tiny computer printed onto it. Basically, the same stuff you'd find inside a Fitbit. And just like a Fitbit will measure your heart rate and convert that data into computer code, the Neuralink is measuring your neuron activity and converting it into a digital signal. The digital representation of brain activity is then broadcast wirelessly through the Bluetooth signal into a separate processing device like a laptop. And that's where Neuralink can start to convert the binary code into usable data. The best example of this was back in 2020 when Neuralink showed us this demo with N1 implanted pigs. The purpose of the demonstration was to show neuron activity associated with the pig's snout. So every time the pig touched something with her nose, the resulting neural spike would be picked up by the N1 implant and broadcast wirelessly to a nearby computer, which would then convert that activity into both audio and visual representations, and this all happened instantly. This is a, this is a high energy pig. Uh... So every blip noise that you hear is a specific neuron firing inside the pig's brain and the different tones signify different neurons activating as the pig snuffles around in the hay and eats food. The next step up from here is to have the computer convert those bleeps and blips into software commands. This is what we're seeing next with the Mind Pong Monkey demonstration. The first thing they do is teach a Neuralink implanted monkey to play a simple video game using a joystick. So, as the monkey is manipulating the controller with his hand, the N1 is broadcasting all of the associated neural activity back to the processing computer. Once they have this data, Neuralink can use machine learning to identify the specific neuron firings that are associated with the physical movements of the joystick. Once they have this code figured out, Neuralink can bypass the joystick, 
taking neural signals from the N1 to the computer and then converting those into command instructions for the video game. And then finally, Neuralink can remove the joystick entirely because now all the monkey needs to do is think about moving the paddle on the screen to activate the specific neural pathway that the computer will interpret as a command to the video game. Now all we have to do is take that very simple demonstration and scale up the complexity to the human level. There's really not a whole lot of difference between a monkey moving a pong paddle and a person moving a cursor on a computer screen. Whether you're using a mouse or a trackpad, or one of those spinning ball things, your intention to move the cursor begins in your motor cortex as a series of neuron activations. So, if you had a Neuralink in your head that was wired into those specific groups of neurons, then instead of that signal having to move from your brain, down your spine, into your arm, into your hand, and into the mouse and into the computer, you could go direct from brain signal to computer command. This is how we help people who have lost the ability to control their bodies, either through a physical injury or a debilitating disease. With that direct brain-to-computer interface, a paralyzed individual could use a computer just as well as an able-bodied individual. And with enough practice, a Neuralink-implanted person would be able to use a computer significantly faster and more efficiently than an able-bodied person with a mouse. Taking it back to our simple video game demonstration, imagine you are playing Pong with a joystick and I'm playing Pong with a Neuralink. Now my command intentions can go straight from my brain to the computer via Bluetooth, while yours need to travel through your arm and into a controller before the computer even gets the message. Who would be more likely to win the game? And now, we are kind of realizing the long-term potential for what Neuralink can do. In the most simple sense, it is going to remove the barriers that separate man from machine. Don't freak out though, not yet at least, because in the short term, and even in the medium term, devices like Neuralink are only going to be used for the medical purposes that we've alluded to, restoring functionality to the people who need it the most, and this will likely take decades of work to perfect. But eventually, somewhere down the road, we reach a point where everyone who needs a Neuralink has a Neuralink, and those that do will have technological capabilities that far exceed a non-implanted individual. And this is where brain-computer interface starts to go mainstream, because people who want that enhanced ability will be more than willing to endure a hole in their head to get access to Neuralink. Now it's the year 2045, and you've got your first cybernetic enhancement. Your Neuralink allows you to interface directly with any Bluetooth-enabled device just by thinking. And if that device happens to support a powerful artificial intelligence software, then you've essentially now linked your mind directly to AI, creating a whole new layer of processing power on top of your biological hardware. This is the symbiosis that Elon Musk is always talking about. It's pretty spooky, right? Try not to worry about that stuff too much. We're still a very long way away from it. Neuralink is just beginning the first phase of their initial human studies, and all that they're really looking to do right now is verify that the experiments they've already done in monkeys will have the same results in a human. Then they need to verify that it's safe and effective to have a Fitbit in your skull for years at a time. And then we can start thinking about the next step forward. So until then, you pretty much know everything you need to know about how Neuralink works.